Hello my royal lovelies, welcome back to the channel and as always welcome to my home. In today's video I want to talk about a few different bits and pieces. I would like to pick up on a video I made last week where I broke the news, I think I was the first to break it, um, that Prince Harry is going to receive um, a large proportion of the late Queen Mother's legacy when he turns 40 in September. So and this is disproportionate to William. And I think that, well, if you want to see what I said about that, go watch that video. Um, but there is, I had a lot of comments uh, from it. And one comment stood out in particular, um, which I sort of wanted to sort of come back on and, and speak about. Because um, maybe a lot of people feel the same way. I don't know. But it's one that stood out for me. Um, and that was that you know potentially the uh, the proportion of the money was incorrect that harry would not receive 8 million as opposed to william receiving 2 or 3 million and of course the reasoning for this in the the queen mother's will provision was that uh, William would obviously inherit the throne and of course he'd have the duchy of cornwall as income and harry would not so a larger proportion of the estate would go to Harry. So uh, I'm not talking about the the um, <laughs> the pros and cons of that in this video. We're just talking kind of facts. So the estimate uh, of Harry's proportion of the estate in today's money is around eight million pounds when he turns 40. So what we have to look back on, of course, the, the comment was saying, well, the, the amounts are wrong. That seems like way too much money for Harry to be receiving. Uh, from the Queen Mother, especially when the Queen Mother had other grandchildren and, and the bulk of her legacy, which was sort of 50 or 60 million pounds at that time in the early 2000s, went to monarch to monarch transfer and went to the late Queen. Um, so yes, 8 million pound does sound like an awful lot of money because it is an awful lot of money. But what we have to remember is at the time of the Queen Mother's passing, uh, there were, there were how many grandchildren? There were Zara and Peter, there was William and Harry, and there was Beatrice, and there was Eugenie, because um, Lady Louise Windsor and uh, the Earl of Wessex were not born at the time. So there were six, there were six grandchildren. So a proportion of that legacy would have been set aside for all of those grandchildren. Uh, we're not just talking William and Harry here, uh, but Harry was supposed to have a large chunk of the money because he would be a full-time working royal, whereas the others were not expected to be so, other than William, of course, um, and therefore he required more of the money, the lion's share, if you like. So yes, £8 million does sound like a lot of money, but what you have to factor in, and I think this is what that person forgot to factor in when they left the comment, was the growth in the estate. So this money will have been put in trust, which means that it is managed over, well, it's been more than 20 years now. And just think, you know, when William and Harry inherited their mother's legacy, I think they had so much money uh, at one certain age and then so much at another that her legacy had doubled in that time. So the Queen Mother had been passed away, well, was passed away even longer. So you think that that legacy would have grown at least by double. So £8 million does not seem that, uh, that exuberant when you think, when you factor in over 20 years worth of financial growth. Uh, and if it was invested well, it could have even been even more. I mean, imagine if it was invested in Bitcoin or <laughs> when that was first released. I mean, I don't think it was invested in Bitcoin. But I'm just saying, I don't think it sound, sounds wildly out of estimate, if you know what I mean. So, so yes, uh, I think, you know, he will be receiving round about £8 million when he turns 40. Next, I want to recap on the UK's proposed national service policy by the Conservatives. So this is not a policy uh, that has actually come in yet. It's something that is being proposed during our election period here in the UK. So July the 4th is the elections. Uh, the two main parties, of course, there are more parties in the UK that could come into power. But 
as always, it's either the Conservatives or Labour. So they both have their ma manifestos out, and one of the main Conservative policies was the introduction of national service to the UK uh, for all 18-year-olds, and there has been confirmation that uh, that would also affect George, Charlotte and Louis. So if there was ever, ever any doubt about that, that has been um, confirmed. So, um, so yeah, if the Conservatives get in, if they, you know, bring this policy in, then they, the royal children will have to do uh, national service, even though their entire life is national service, uh, even though their entire life is public duty, even though the male children do go into the army uh, and experience all the different uh, armed forces. And, you know, it, it's modern times. Princess Charlotte could do exactly the same. Why not? You know, this was something that was denied to Princess Anne. And I think Princess Anne would have absolutely thrived in the armed forces. She was very much like her father, the Duke of Edinburgh. And I think she would have, she would have, you know, knocked it out of the park. She would have really enjoyed, I think, I think the armed forces. Instead, she went straight into uh, royal duty. But Princess Charlotte, you know, we're in, we're in modern times now. Princess Charlotte could do the same as the boys. So my point is, their entire life is national service. So this is just kind of, you know, Mickey Mouse lip service just to appease the naysayers. Next, I want to have a little bit of a conflab about the debutantes balls. So the last debutante ball was in the 1950s. Queen Elizabeth did preside over it. And this is when, you know, all of the young, eligible ladies of society, of course, we, you know, we're kind of evoking Bridgerton vibes here. So, but it was real, you know, this, this was not a TV show. This actually happened. There was a, you know, a season, if you like, and, um, you know, young ladies looking for a husband were presented to the sovereign and they were all wearing these sort of white uh, ball gowns and, you know, if they had tiaras, they'd put all their tiaras and their jewels on and, you know, their families would sort of, you know, present them to the monarch and sort of present them into society. They would have a season of balls, elegant balls and meeting the eligible bachelors of the day, uh, all these rich and wealthy and powerful men. Oh, my goodness. Uh, if only, if only. No, I'm sorted. I mean, I'm engaged. Uh, so I don't need to go to a debutante ball. But I can see why it was kind of, you know, phased out, why it was abandoned. And in its place was the, uh, what we now know as the, the garden parties. So, you know, ra so the summer season was replaced rather than the debutante balls with garden parties honouring people that had done good work in society, um, uh, you know, and making them feel special, basically. So we have, you know, is it four main garden parties of the season? I think there are two or three at Buckingham Palace and then one at Holyrood House uh, during um, during Royal Scottish Week. Um, so, so, yes, debutante balls. But I was thinking the other day that I think they may have a, a place in today's society but maybe not just for the posh and all the rich and wealthy people, but maybe, you know, de debutante balls or rather the concept of meeting people in person is actually something that we should be getting back to. So although, um, you know, at the time it was considered out of date and it was phased out, I actually think in today's world where, you know, people go on dating apps and dating websites and it's it's all this flick, 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 flick nonsense. And it's very superficial. You don't get to know someone. You judge somebody on their profile. And you just, you know, most people just look at the pictures, don't they? And swipe, swipe, swipe. So I think there's actually, you know, I think it would benefit our young people uh, and older people as well, for that matter, to actually have these balls where you can meet people in public and and in person, and everyone knows what they're there for. So it's not just a case of, oh, well, let's go down the pub or let's go to a restaurant and just meet people. Or, you know, this is, this is you know, people are going because they want to find love. They want to meet people for a romantic connection. And I think actually bringing back a version of 
the debutante balls, you know, up and down the country, not just, you know, with the royal connections, might actually be quite a good idea because, like I say, we're in a very disposable society of flick, 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 swipe, swipe, swipe. Is it swipe left or swipe right? I don't know. Uh, but I think it would benefit people to meet in person and find those, you know, romantic love connections off the bat. Uh, so I'm all in favour of bringing back the debutante balls. Will King Charles and Queen Camilla ever preside over a debutante ball? It's highly doubtful. But I can live in hope of all the finery and the tiaras and the jewels and the and the mothers presenting their daughters into society. I would be one of those mothers. I absolutely would. I'd, I'd be. <laughs> I would be one of those pushy mothers pushing their, their children out into, into society, trying to find a very good match. I'd be like, what is it, her off, what's the mother called off Pride and Prejudice, Mrs. Somebody? I'd be, I'd be her, I'd have, I'd be like, oh, I, I need, I need a husband that's on at least 10,000 a year for my, for my daughters. Yes, that would be me. I would be her. <laughs> so anyway, let me know what you think about the debutante balls. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me, to you all, and goodbye.